Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kai. Today, we're gonna be looking at the most affordable ultra high-speed camera in 2021. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the only YouTuber that I've seen talking about this camera is Daniel Schiffer. Now, before we start looking at this relatively affordable high-speed camera, let's first take a look at what you can do with this camera. Obviously, there are visual effects you know, involved in this thing, but the slow motion that you see inside is shot by the camera. Amazing, even, even the sound effects. The sound effects is amazing. Wow, man, I've, I've seen this like 10 times already and I'm still impressed. This one is the best. This is, have anyone who's seen Tenet, this is what, this is like an effect from Tenet. Man, super creative, really creative, man. So you guys should definitely check out his YouTube channel, which is a scene right here called Macro Room. Now the camera is called Kronos 2.1 HD. Obviously they had a lot of version before that. So for those who don't know, there's actually another competitor of this camera, but let's first take a look at the spec of the Kronos 2.1. So the highest frame rate that this camera can shoot with the highest resolution is 1080p with 1000 FPS. 1000 FPS, that's already amazing. Like I probably the one that you see is shot with 1080p, 1000 FPS. And right now the price of the Kronos 2.1 HD sits at a $5,000. Now, this is still a very, very affordable high-speed camera because if you look at the Phantom Flex, I remember the Phantom Flex probably it cost like $10,000 to rent for just one day here in Taiwan. Yeah, you need $10,000 to rent for one day. Actually, let's look at Phantom Flex. Phantom Flex 4K which can almost shoot 1000 FPS in 4K. The price range from range from $109,000 all the way up to $164,900. Okay, so if you want to compare $5,000 versus $164,900, obviously the Phantom Flex can shoot in 4K versus the Kronos only shoot in 1080p, but would you rather pay that much money just to shoot in 4K. Obviously, there's not just these two high-speed camera on the market. There's another competitor of the Kronos 2.1 HD, which is called the FreeFly Wave. I got this spec sheet comparison from YM Cinema Magazine that compares the FreeFly Wave versus the Kronos 2.1 HD, okay? So let's take a look at what's the difference between these two camera. The first thing they wanna compare is the sensor. So the sensor of the FreeFly Wave is a super 35 millimeter 4K global shutter. I think if you wanna shoot high frame rate, you have to use global shutter because probably if you, if it's not a global shutter, the jelly effect would probably be really insane. So it has to be global shutter. And Kronos is using a global shutter as well, but it's using a micro four third sensor. FreeFly wins at the sensor because it has a bigger sensor. Now the FreeFly Wave can shoot in 4K in 422 FPS, but the maximum resolution of Kronos is only 1080p at 1000 FPS. Some might say that the FreeFly Wave is better, yeah, in this case. But if you wanna compare the maximum FPS that each camera can, can shoot in, the FreeFly Wave shoots in a maximum FPS at 9,259 FPS at 2,048 by 128. I don't even know what kind of ratio you get by this pixel ratio. But yeah, maybe you wanna shoot something super tight. And the Kronos 2.1 can shoot at 24,000 FPS at 640 by 96. W what the hell does it even look like? I don't even know how it looked like, but it exists and you can shoot in 24,000 FPS. Man, what is the idea of 24,000 FPS? Like, what can you see? Can you, 
Can you capture the future? Which makes you wonder what's the highest ISO this camera can capture because with my not so bright future, you probably need a lot of ISO to, to be able to see that. Okay, so I don't see the, their maximum ISO right here, but yeah. Now the recording format of each camera, okay, the free fly, you can shoot in 10 bit compressed RGB. Okay, 10 bit, not bad. And the Kronos 2.1 can shoot in uh, H.2. 246 and cinema dng which i think is good because you know when if you can shoot in raw then there's you get a lot of uh, dynamic range and there's more flexibility in comes to when it comes to color grading but uh, cinema dng is actually pretty hard to deal with because it's probably like a sequence of photo and then you have to uh, put it put into some program and then you color grade and you export it into video but i would say that chrome's 2.1 win just by a bit because even though it's hard to deal with cinema dng i would still love to be able to shoot in raw format now, next up, capture time. This is really important because from what I know, a lot of uh, high-speed camera out there can only shoot like three seconds for the capture time because they shoot in like a high frame rate. And because, you know, this high frame rate, it takes a lot of storage. The size of these footage are really, really huge. So they cannot just shoot unlimited. But if we look at free fly wave, it is only limited by storage size, which means that the bigger storage you have, the more footage you can shoot. That That is really amazing. Now, next up, Chronos 2.7 seconds, 5.5 seconds and 11 seconds. That's, but consider the amount that you can slow down with 11 seconds. If you want your video to be 24 FPS, then 1000 FPS, that, that's probably a lot. I don't even want to calculate it, but yeah. <laughs> now, internal battery, one free fly, 1.4 hour runtime and a Chronos one hour. I think, you know, internal battery doesn't really matter. If you can connect to like an external battery, it can last pretty long. So for the lens mount, the FreeFly uses locking E mount and the Kronos, you can use Nikon, Canon, C mounts. They got a lot of options, so that's good as well. And now comes the price. The FreeFly Wave costs $10,000, $10,000, man. So I think the biggest difference, honestly, like these, they all have their own quality, you know, both have something better than the other, but the price of free fly is way much more expensive than the Kronos, which really makes Kronos 2.1 really affordable and more tempting. The thing that I want to talk about is that getting a high speed camera is actually a very good idea, a good business idea, because you can actually create and produce a lot of stuff based on uh, slow motion. Like you can build like a whole business or a whole YouTube channel surrounding the concept, the idea of slow motion. Like maybe you can open an Instagram account and then you just shoot a bunch of stuff in slow motion, just post it. Usually these things get a lot of views. You can open a whole business, like a whole video production company that focuses on slow motion footage. Probably not a lot of people do that. I know a company that they shoot like slow motion food ad and that's all they do, but they make a lot of money. And because they're so, uh, focusing on this field that whenever someone wants to shoot food commercial, they think of them because they make like crazy good slow motion food commercial and they have a really good business model. If you can find a really good idea, I think getting a slow motion camera can make you a lot of money. That's just an idea that popped up in my head. I think these two cameras are really impressive, but uh, personally, I would go for the Kronos 2.1 HD just because it's like half of the price. So what do you guys think about these affordable ultra high-speed cameras? Would you want to buy it and would you invest in it just to open a business based on slow motion footage? So yeah, that's about it with the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.